This video is really getting us ready for calculus. So hopefully in your pre-calc class you've been introduced to limits. Um, limits are really the foundation, it's a foundational tool for us to develop both the derivative as well as the integral, which are essential operations for a first year calculus course. So what is a limit? We'll take a look at this function over here. So you see it kind of in purple. It's a continuous function until you get to the x value of a. Notice at x equals a, there's an open circle there. So it's not continuous there, but then it's actually filled in. There's a closed circle up here at the y value of m. So based off this picture, what is f of a? If I say, so that's just asking, hey, what is the y value when x is equal to a? f of a is equal to m. Because, again, that's the closed circle. But notice a limit is asking, as we get really close to a, as we approach a from the left side and from the right side, what y value are we approaching? So notice, I'm you know, just in these arrows here, as we're approaching a, notice from the left side, the y value is not approaching m, it's approaching l. And if I, as I approach this function, as I get closer to A on the right side, the Y values are approaching L. So here the limit as X approaches A of F of X is equal to L. So hopefully you were listening to how I was saying this. I want you to have the kind of the skills and the resources to be able to describe this. What is, how do you say this? This is the limit as X approaches A of F of X and it's equal to L. So it's very possible that a function may obtain a certain y value m, but as we are actually getting close to that x value where this m value occurs, it's approaching a different value. And that's obviously um, especially common for discontinuous functions. So how do you do limits algebraically? Well, the first thing you want to do for continuous functions, it's truly easy. Just plug in 1. So 2 times 1 plus 1, that's just 3. So for continuous functions, the y value is equal to the limit value. But now if I plug in the limit as x goes to 3 of x squared minus 9 over 3 minus 3, notice 3 squared minus 9 is 0, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So I get 0 over 0. Everyone, that's not an answer. That's what we call an indeterminate form. So what you need to do then is algebraically manipulate it. So you might be notice that x squared minus 9, that's a difference of squares. That's x plus 3 times x minus 3. Review those factoring pages in the video if you need to. And so by, by doing that, I now notice, oh, this x minus 3 cancels out. So then I'm just left with x plus 3. So what's the limit as x approaches 3 of 3 plus 3? Well, 3 plus 3 is 6. So this is an example where you don't have a continuous function at 3. It's approaching the y value of 6, but it actually doesn't exist there. The next one, uh, what is the limit as x approaches 5? And notice this little negative sign in the exponent means from the left side. So I'm going to write that. So it's, again, a negative, just a minus sign in the exponent. You've never seen that. That means from the left side only. So let's do this one algebra um, graphically because you're going to find algebraically it doesn't work. When I plug in five, I get five over or five minus five, which is zero. One over zero doesn't work. So let's again understanding our parent functions. I know there's a vertical asymptote at five, which is probably making sense. Oh, that's why. I get 1 over 0. And as I approach 5 from the left side, think of those x values. Those are the x values of 3, 4, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, so on and so forth. So I'm going to plug in 4. So when I plug in 4, I get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. If I plug in 4.5, I get 1 over negative 0.5, which is negative 2. If I plug in 3, I get negative 1 half. So long story short, just by recognizing what reciprocal functions look like or rational functions look like, it's going to do something like this. And I bet it's going to do something like that on the other side. But again, my focus now is going to be right here. 
So as we are approaching 5 from the left side, what is happening to the y values? It's going down. So in this case, this answer is going to be negative infinity because there's an asymptote there. It doesn't converge to a specific value. It diverges. It goes down to negative infinity. The next one here. What is the limit as x approaches 2 to the plus sign? What does that mean? This means, you can probably guess this, from the right side. And if I plug in 2, again I get 1 over 0. That's probably a good indicator that there's an asymptote there. So what I'm going to do is sketch this out. We know there's vertical asymptotes whenever the denominator is equal to 0. That occurs at both x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. So now I'm curious, what's happening as we approach 2 from the right side? So what are some x values to the right of 2? Well, how about 3? How about 4? So on and so forth. If I plug in 3, I get 1 over um, 9 minus 4, which is 1 fifth. If you plug in 4, 1 over 16 minus 4 is 1 twelfth. But if you plug in like 2.5 or 2.1, we're going to find that these values go up and up. So again, where should your mind be focused as you're trying to do this limit? Right here. So as we approach 2 from the right side, notice the y values go up to positive infinity. I'm having trouble with my pen here. There we go, to positive infinity. Looking at some more here, some other strategies. Um, as you approach 5, what's the limit as x approaches 5? Well, here, 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And then 5 minus 5 is 0. So we have the issue of an indeterminate form. So I'm going to erase that because what do we need to do here? When you have indeterminate forms like 0 over 0 involving uh, limits with square roots, what we're going to do is called um, multiply by the conjugate. So x, the square root of x minus 1 plus 2 over the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So notice it was the exact same thing as the numerator, but instead of the minus, I changed the sign to plus, and I'm going to multiply that on top and bottom. Again, why am I allowed to do that? What's anything divided by itself? It's the number 1. So I'm just multiplying by the number 1, which does not change an expression's value. But I do now, as I multiply this out, I do need to FOIL all of this. So as I FOIL, I'm going to get the square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x minus 1, which is simply x minus 1. So I'm just going to rewrite my limit as x goes to 5 of x minus 1. And now, square root of x minus 1 times 2, when I'm doing the O of FOIL, is 2 square root of x minus 1. The I of FOIL, so the inside, negative 2 times the square root of x minus 1 is negative 2 square root of x minus 1. And finally, the last, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And on bottom here, I'm going to just leave this. I'll give you a hint that I think we can just leave this as is. Because what now is going to happen, notice you have positive 2 times the square root of x minus 1 and negative 2 times the square root of x minus 1. So on top, we have an x minus 1 minus 4. Well, do you all agree minus, negative 1 minus 4 is just negative 5? So I have an x minus 5 on top and another x minus 5 on bottom times the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So what does the conjugate do? Well, guess what? It's going to allow us to cancel this x minus 5 on bottom, which was what our issue was. Because our issue was we were having a 0 on the bottom. So now I'm just left with the limit as x goes to 5. If everything cancels out in the numerator, you can just put a 1 of the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So now let's try to evaluate. 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So this answer is 1 fourth. So the conjugate's an important one here. And these last three are limits going to infinity. So as we go all the way to the right end of our graph, there's just some patterns you want to know, especially with polynomials. Excuse me. And they all relate to the degree. Remember, the degree is the highest exponent here. So I'm just highlighting them all. These will be really fast. 
So in the first example, the degree of the numerator is 2, the degree of the denominator is 1. When the degree of the numerator is bigger than the denominator, think of the numerator, it grows faster than the denominator. The numerator blows up. So what happens to the y values here? They go to infinity. They don't converge, they diverge, they just keep growing. The next case, when we're going to, the limit goes to infinity, but the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same, we're going to focus just on the leading coefficients. Again, leading coefficients means what are the coefficients with the highest exponents? In this case, 3 minus 1, which is just 3. Because the, both the numerator and denominator grow at the same rate because they have the same highest exponent, the same degree. So that's why we look at those coefficients. And then the final example is when x goes to infinity, what if the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the, de of the numerator? So here it's 1 on top and 2 on bottom. Well, in this case now, this denominator, because of the x squared, it grows faster. So the denominator gets bigger. So eventually, this goes to 0 because you're going to have a kind of a big number on top, but then a really, really, really big number on bottom. And so because this grows faster, it has a higher exponent, um, it's going to truly go to zero after a long time. So we'll start our year, the school year, doing limits. So if these aren't perfect, just know you'll get even better.